All right, we are back. And I know you're not looking at the right thing. So let me get you unfrozen. Freeze right. All right, so we did the drain fitting. Pump basics. Enjoy the next few minutes of easy. All right. Pressure. Pressure and flow are inverse. Not asterisk. <laughs> okay. Yes, that is true, but it's also false. Depends on how you're looking at it. So in the video, he kept saying the pressure and the flow are inverse simply because what he's talking about is a pump spring is pressing down on it and with this particular pump if you closed off the an orifice downstream the pressure would build and if you open it flow would increase and the pressure would drop follow okay um, but if we looked at say um, a constant displacement pump that's running and we have a fixed orifice and we increase the speed of the pump then pressure is going to go up. and flow will go up oh, to the little orifice yeah push it'll push harder so in that case the pressure is going to go up and the flow is going to go up Follow? Say that again. So if I had an engine driven fuel pump, uh, constant displacement, because uh, technically the diaphragm is engine driven. Yes. All right. And so it's this constant displacement pump. Constant if I if I kept the the an orifice on the outlet the same size and I increase the speed of the pump, what happens to this the pressure in this tube? Pressure increases. Pressure increases. Pressure increase. So what happens to the fuel going out of that little orifice? Flow increases going to spray further, isn't it? Yep. There we go. So in that case, pressure and flow are not inverse. Directly. They're directly thank you. That's the word directly proportional. So, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So this particular, this one, Let's make sure we get that. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. diaphragm just sorry no that's what I'm talking about because this is all off of kind of what he talked about these are the key points so a large opening large opening will will allow a lot of fuel to flow and the pressure will be low will allow a lot of fuel to flow A lot of fuel to flow and pressure will be low. A small opening will restrict flow. will restrict flow, I forget where I'm at here, uh, there we go, flow, and cause pressure to go up. To go up. What happens if I in increase the speed of an engine with one of these pumps on it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't increase pump. the pump pressure at all? No, no. it only pumps as much as it can. The spring so is spring. The spring. How do you get more pressure out of this pump? Bigger, bigger, bigger spring. Bigger, bigger spring. spring. The only exception to that rule would be is if you're pumping it so slow mm. that it's, and the orifice is so small, then pumping it faster to bring it up to speed would work. Because if the spring pushes all the way to the end of its stroke and waits, mm. and then it catches, comes back, goes all the way to its stroke, and it's like, okay, I'm ready, then yes, you would have lower pressure. Uh, three, three. Max pressure is. Max pressure 
is at what? Remember? Zero flow. What determines how much fuel goes to the engine? Fuel servo, carb. So pump, the pump does not determine how much fuel. This is true of most systems, all but one. Determine how much fuel flows to the engine. servo does. Alright, the pump, the pump must meet or exceed the servo demand or there is a loss of proper fuel flow to the engine. In other words, the servo, which is the orifice at the end, if it is so big that the pressure starts to drop from the pump, then the pump isn't meeting the demand. And now you got a problem. Pump. Then you need a bigger pump. Pump must meet, oops, meet or exceed, meet or exceed the servo demand. Demand, or there is a loss of or there is a loss of proper flow to the engine. Is, is that what cavitation is? Or is oh, cavitation is totally different. Okay. So you don't really get, you get cavitation with a, a boost pump. But cavitation, to me, is best described as the propeller in, air, in, in water. Air in entering it as opposed to... Yeah. Well, like, so you get cavitation with a pro boat prop yep. when you have such a low pressure that what happens is the, the water actually boils and creates oh, air pockets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you mean by a loss of proper flow? Just, is it Press meet or exceed the servo demand or there's a loss of proper flow. Okay, so let me go back. The pump, you can see this. So if the servo is saying, the, the carburetor yes. is saying, I need more fuel. So, and we're going to look at fuel servos and, and carburetors actually open up openings. So the opening gets bigger. So, it's, you know, we got to get fuel to the engine. Open up. Okay. And then the pump, which is supposed to be putting, say, 15 PSI, goes, all right. Well, you've asked for so much fuel that I can no longer do 15 PSI. I can do eight. Everything goes to hell. Because downstream, the whole servo is depending on pressures. Mm -hmm. And once you start dropping pressures, it doesn't, it, it's uh, an analog computer, basically, based on pressures. Mm -hmm. And so it goes, well, not, what do I do now? Uh, pressure's gone, so this doesn't work, and that doesn't work. And so things just go all wonky. Not to be all technical, but. Uh, always plum, plum drain lines. Where? Overboard. Remember, there are high and low pressure pumps. I thought he showed it in the movie, but he doesn't. So high pressure pumps. Pumps have a reinforcing ring on the bottom. It's a steel ring around the bottom. It's, it's kind of like a washer with a bunch of holes drilled in it on the bottom. Have a steel reinforcing ring. Ring on the bottom. Uh, 
And air leaks can be a serious problem. Air leaks can be a serious problem. Let everybody get caught up. Switching gears. Going to take a deep breath. Oh boy. Uh oh. Switching gears. Pressure carbs are easy. You guys make it hard. <laughs> you don't overthink it, you underthink it. <laughs> All right. Everybody caught up? We're good. Pumps, we're fine. Sure. The reason why we talk about pumps first, yeah. What's the biggest failure yeah, point? Biggest failure point. Diaphragms. Keeping People keeping them on for 50, 60 years and mm. diaphragms get all nasty. These things, they get all dry. And so as long as you use them, there's fuel in them, they're good. But when they get all dried out and yeah, let them sit. So airplanes don't like to sit. Yeah. All right. Steel reinforcing ringers right there on the bottom. That one has one. You know what makes me sad? He probably died from COVID. <laughs> I guess I'm a morbid guy like that. There we go, it's a pressure carburetor. Probably a little PS5, it's what we're gonna be talking about. Yeah. Lots of safety wire. safety wire. Lots of safety wire. A little guy about yay big. All right, let's see here. That's not the PS5 you wanted? In a little bit, we'll talk about. Uh, let's see. We'll talk about this one. The PR58. Yep, that's the one I saw up there on the. Not that big. Jesus Christ. That's the one that you have on the. I have it up on the shelf. PR58, used on the Pratt and Whitney R2800. That's the uh, engine that you walk in by the pressure washer. There you go. Yep. Those airplanes right there. It looks like that. <laughs> it looks so simple. Right, right. You guys are going to be fine. We're going to go through all that. But we got to go through all this first. There we go. All right. Where do we Where do we begin here? That was just the car wash. That was the whole engine, bro. Yeah. Nope. That was the carburetor. <laughs> this is a simplified version. Is there going to be a test on this? No, no. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you all about it, and, you know, and I hope you remember it. If you don't, it's all right. <laughs> all right, we can write a couple of notes here, I guess. No, he's sighing again. Heavy sigh. You don't have to write. All right. Pressure carburetors. Pressure carburetors. Well, after the, the regular carburetor, regular carburetor had some problems. What were their problems? Icing. Adjusting the mixtures. Icing. Can't fly it upside down. Could, couldn't fly it upside down. Mechanics don't know how to adjust the mixture or idle speed. Pilots don't know how to adjust the mixture. All right, so less prone to ice. Less prone to ice, uh, especially throttle ice, since the discharge nozzle is after the venturi and throttle. Um, so pressure carburetors less prone to ice, especially, especially throttle ice. Why is that again? Ice, because. <laughs> The discharge nozzle is after the venturi and throttle plate. So it tells you right now we're moving the discharge nozzle out of the venturi. 
So we had carburetor, throttle plate, venturi, discharge nozzle. Well, now we got venturi, throttle plate, discharge nozzle. Oh. We'll put it up here. All right. Gravity and inertia have little effect. Doesn't know, doesn't care. With the exception of like one little part on, on the bigger one, doesn't know if it's upside down, right side up, this way, that way. It's all the same to it. it still pumps. Still pumps, still works. It's not a pump, it's a throttle. Uh, it's a yeah, it's carburetor. It's have little effect. Uh, what else? Fuel is automatically automatically metered at all engine speeds and loads. Well, really, you know, I write that. I think, well, how is that different than a than a carburetor? In that statement, I would say, well, that's more or less what a car, regular carburetor, float carburetor does, right? Um, it does not have, it kind of does, you'll see. But, and I've honestly, I don't ever think I've flown a pressure carburetor, but some of the bigger ones have weird settings, auto lean settings. Yours doesn't. Bonanza, don't think it. Two settings. It's uh, low altitude and high altitude. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it does. It's And some of them have, um, you'll look at them, they have all different kinds. It's auto rich, auto lean. Um, so it can automatically take care of all of that stuff. It is, do I have this on here? Um, I will just say that it's much better at, me so we talked about how the carburetor has the Venturi but the Venturi does not really do the weight of the air, right? Uh -huh. So it's really stupid in that aspect. A pressure carburetor is not. They sense density. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it corrects for it. A, B, C, D, okay, D. Um, it atomizes, atomizes fuel under pressure, oops. Under pressure. Under pressure. Um, that results in smoother engine. Smoother engine. Um, better economy. Basically because of the one before it. Better at atomization better uh, fuel metering, um, and protection against vapor lock. Are you sold? Yes. All right. How much does it cost? It's not how much it costs. It's about the what, are the, what are the downsides to pressure carburetor? I don't hate to have these notes, but uh, number one, how many moving parts are in a... MA3 SPA. Not much. Yeah, you got some floats. Yeah. You got a throttle valve. Uh, okay, when we look at how many diaphragms there are going to be in a pressure carburetor, it is all of them. That's how many. <laughs> yes, all of the diaphragms in the world go into one. So it has lots and lots and lots of little chambers and diaphragms. And when those diaphragms get dried out and cracked, they go bad. You can't open it up and change it. I opened up my carburetor, put in new floats, changed the needle and seat, and uh, practically it was an overhaul. Right? I mean, the only thing left would have been, I think, to, well, that was, yeah, I could have just taken it apart more and inspected it and put it back together and tested it and called an overhaul, but didn't need to. Um, you would not catch me ever opening up a pressure carburetor. Never, never, ever. So people who have these pressure carburetors, PS5s we're talking about right now, were pretty common on Bonanzas. Um, 
our company, my boss, he had a Pitts. You, know, you guys know what a Pitts is? A little bi- biplane, stunt plane that had a mm. PS5, you know, and his be, don't ever let it dry out. He'd get all in, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't do anything. Um, but yeah, you don't want to let them dry out. And you're going to see a bit. They're a little, little complicated, but they're kind of cool. All right, um, let's see. Ah, we could ride a little bit more. Just to kind of give you an idea of what's happening. And you go, huh, what? And that'll show you. <sighs> you didn't. I did it for you. So, two. Uh, basic principle. Of operation. All right. So, not many points here, and then we done. So carburetor, we're right, carb, senses, senses mass airflow. And it's not a Catholic thing. So when I say mass airflow, it, we're talking about the density of the air now. So it senses the density of the airflow to regulate, to regulate the fuel pressure to a metering system. Uh, the fuel is not open to the atmosphere. Not open to the atmosphere. Somewhere there it is, um, like a float bowl. Our float bowl is is that. So, so fuel is under pressure. Under pressure from the tank. Fuel tank. To the discharge nozzle. So if it's under pressure from all the way from the fuel tank all the way to the discharge nozzle the entire way, then we have less chance of vapor lock. Controls, controls fuel to the engine. By sensing two forces. What are those two forces? Air pressure and air density. Very mm, close. Air, air metering force. Okay, now air metering forces and fuel metering force. I just want to say fuel metering force. What is fuel metering force in a carburetor? Yeah, pressure differential of what? The, the low the atmospheric and the low pressure. Uh, okay, the, you're, you're the not wrong. So fuel in a carburetor, fuel metering force is the difference in air pressure. Between the venturi and the bubble. Exactly. How stupid is that? Very. The fuel metering force is the difference between air pressure here and air pressure there. Okay, thankfully we can just move that aside. And now when I say air metering force, it's the difference in pressure of air and fuel metering force can be the difference in pressure of fuel. fuel. Woo, it's getting easier already, isn't it? it is. Yeah. yeah. Just where it starts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> Yay, pictures. All right, pictures. Here we go. Pen. Where'd my pen go? I just lost my pen. There's my pen. All right, we're going to focus in right here on these chambers, A, B, C, and D. Well, let's just get acquainted with what's going on here a little bit. Kind of run around here. So here we have the airflow coming in. You know that because it says airflow and it has arrows. Right here we have these things called impact tubes. Really, they're just straws out in the air 
And so they pick up the air pressure that's coming into the carburetor. So obviously as the engine speeds up, the airflow is going to increase and so would the air going into these impact tubes. As I said before, we have a Venturi, but there's no discharge nozzle. Then we have a throttle. Then later on, we'll put a discharge nozzle. Just because. Just because. And it works much better that way. We have a fuel, a fuel control unit. Let's just say this is the fine tuning, if you will. I think that helps to just think this is the fine, fine tuning. Um, but most of it happens right here. And this is, uh, technically, it's an analog computer. Right? Meaning it's not digital, it's just done by valves and springs and diaphragms. Whenever you see a little squiggly line like this, that's a piece of diaphragm. It's a rubber diaphragm. So there's one here, there's one here, there's one here. Um, all right, what else? And then the discharge nozzle will talk about that. So let's talk about the air first. How am I talk about air first? Let me see what we can do. Green? So we have impact air. See that okay? Yeah. Sure. Comes in here and fills up this area. Now that's going to be a high or low pressure? High. All right. High pressure. Everybody agrees with this, I hope. Yes. So if that's high pressure, it's going to tend to push this way. Okay. All right. So far, we're good. Yeah. Spring is helping or hurting? Okay. Pressing out. Oh, okay. Help a little bit. All right. Let's pick another color for air. Darker green? No, that's going to be... You want blue? Okay. Blue. So here we have suction, right? Suction comes through this tube, comes in here, and that's suction. So what's that want to do to this diaphragm between A and B. You want to go right or left? Right. All right. All right. So fuel metering force. Nope. Nope. Let's try that one more time. Air <laughs> metering force. is, in a way, it's A plus B. They're helping each other. B is a suction, and A is a pressure. It's those two things working together. And so over here, we have this poppet valve. What color should the fuel be? Red. So we have fuel under pressure is coming into here. And this is your unmetered fuel pressure. Well, technically it's unmetered up here after this, but I don't want to call it that. Um, it's from the fuel pump. So we can call it uh, un unregulated at this point. Now, simply put, here's a poppet valve. Can you see the poppet valve okay? Yeah. Okay, it's kind of small for some of you guys, but we'll, let me see. There we yes. go. There we go, enhance, but I can't draw now. So this poppet valve, if it goes to, I'm not backwards, am I? If it goes to the left, left to you? Right, right. Uh, to right. close. Right. Goes, goes to the left goes to close? Right. Go yeah, left to close. Right to close. No. Right. What? No, it goes to the left to close. No, to the left to close. It's going to seal it. Don't screw with my head like that, man. <laughs> He's just screwing with me. So it goes to the left, it closes. Right. And no fuel gets through. All right, so simply put, as I increase the throttle, more air is going to flow through here. So with me so far? So if more air flows, what is my green impact air going to do? It's going to push harder on that diaphragm. At the same time, the suction is going to increase in the blue, and that's going to? Help out A. So those two things are working together, hand in hand. They are going to open the poppet valve. Poppet valve is going to go that way. And that's going to make that opening go a little bit bigger. More fuel gets added. And then the fuel 
is going to run through there, up through, up through D. Up through D. Can I get a pen? It's the metering jet. Up to the metering. Up to the metering jet, which we're going to call the fine tuning. All right. Off it goes to the discharge nozzle. Everybody's with me so far. Okay. When the fuel entered D, what did it do to this diaphragm here? Which way? Which tends to close it. All right. What we're looking for is equilibrium. Equilibrium. You don't want it going too far to the right. You don't want it going to, you want it just right. Because what would happen if we didn't have chamber D? As soon as I opened the throttle and we got impact air coming in and suction, A and B, my air metering force, would open the poppet valve. And, you get all the fuel. All the fuel. and fuel would come in and make the engine run faster, yeah. which would make more impact air, which would make more venturi, which would open a little bit more. So it would work for a second, and then it just goes all the way to wide open throttle. There would be no way to control that A and B movement. So we bring in D and we say, okay, wait a minute. A and B start to open, which opens up, lets fuel come into D, and D goes, ah, wait a minute. I'm pushing back the other way. So those things find an equilibrium right at the right spot. Now if I open up the throttle more, more air is going to come through because open the throttle, which increases A and B because they do increase, and they open a little bit more, and they would keep going except a little more fuel comes in. So we do have a fuel pressure drop across this poppet. I really should have used a different color because it actually drops. Um, I will do that. Let me see. Eraser. So, orange. Orange? Okay. Slightly lighter red. Oh, this is Microsoft here. We don't have. Okay, so now we've got the unmetered fuel, because it hasn't gone through the metering unit, but it's certainly loss of pressure right there. So that is, so the pop, it opened a little bit more, a little bit more fuel came in, that pressure went up just a little bit more because the orifice right here, uh, the pop it valve is an orifice, and it got a little bit bigger, so it allowed a little more flow, and because of the way it works, a little bit more flow, now the pressure equalized between we can call that E if we wanted to right here. It doesn't say it, but we call it E. So the pressure, uh oh, she, she's, she's going, she's losing. <laughs> Trying to keep it exciting. <laughs> we just, I'll just run y'all over here for a while. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Will Smith. No way, I'll talk to you later. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Wait, did you make, why'd you make that? Good, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right, so we're going to call this E. I was just trying to help wake you up. It's okay. Do you want to take a nap? There's a couch in my office. <laughs> Phil just took a nap over there. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not tattling on him. Uh, okay, so everybody follow so far? Yeah. Okay, so that equalized the pressure a little bit across here because the orifice opened up. So you do get a little bit of pressure equalizing. So now the pressure in D went up. That's good because I want D pressure to go up a little bit because we need more fuel to flow to the engine because we opened the throttle. So everybody follow so far? Yes. This is so simple, isn't it? When do we so get far. Huh? When do we get to C? Right now. <laughs> All right. The problem with D is that if you think about A and B, I mean, it's just a little bit of air pressure, a little bit of suction. That's not a whole lot. But over here in D, I mean, we got a fuel pump. So it's, you know, quite a bit of pressure. And so, what color, Oscar? Uh, Purple. Okay. C is a constant. It never changes. It is always the same pressure. And... I can't draw Switzerland, but let me show you why. <laughs> it is after the metering jet. Okay? It's after the metering jet. So everything right here is, in fact, 
a constant pressure always i think it's like six psi always held at the same thing and for i'm just gonna say six i could be wrong i have to look at my notes six psi we'll just say okay don't write that down he's writing it down stop writing it down oh you sorry you're texting your girlfriend yeah okay <laughs> never mind it is a constant pressure because the discharge nozzle, look right here. Can you see that? Yeah. The discharge nozzle right there. The discharge nozzle is a little diaphragm and a spring and a little poppet valve. This right here, let's call it a pressure relief valve. Okay. So its job, anytime that fuel pressure goes above 6 PSI, it opens up to bleed off the pressure. Mm -hmm. So if it tried to get to seven, it's gonna open up. Well, what happens if it opens up? That's more, fuel. more fuel is running. That's a good thing, because you want it to, but it just so happens that it's always at a constant, it's always at six PSI, it never changes, and that's really a good thing oh, for us. Okay. So, so you follow? Yeah. So, all right, let's, let's back it up a little bit. Okay, so I will tell you that fuel metering force, fuel metering, metering force is, well, let's take a look at that. Which way is C going? To the right or to the left? No, if, it, if you look at C all by itself. Just C, all by itself. There's no more A, there's no more B, there's no more D. We've eliminated all those pressures. What will C do? No, um, sorry. Okay, this... Let me, yeah. Hang on. Okay, let me explain. This right here, see how small it is? What that represents is a flexible seal that allows the poppet to move back and forth. So that's not a diaphragm. This is a diaphragm. This is a diaphragm. It looks like one. It's drawn like one. So, uh, and that's why it's so small. We want no, no uh, pressure effect. So C is going to push to the right. So what is that doing? Is it helping or hurting AB? It's helping. Okay. So that's going this way. So fuel metering force is D minus C. Because D is bigger. So remember I told you D was too much? Yeah. Too much? It's, you know, 10, 10 12 PSI. Well, that's going to, it's always going to win. A and B just can't keep up, so they got to have a friend. So they bring in C. So C is their friend, which is 6 PSI. And that's a pressure pump or pressure pump. There we go. Done. Mic drop. There you go. Um, <laughs> you can go. Uh, I'll cover just a little bit more but as we go all right so do you follow let's let's try this again so everybody's kind of nobody got hurt oh you were sleeping at that point okay why is why is purple at a constant yes okay so i'm glad she asked how many other people are glad she asked yeah, I thought so. Okay, number one, it's beyond the metering jet. That's an orifice. Okay, so right there we have a pressure drop. And that's where it changes. So what happens if we had this orange here made its way up in here? Let's say it was 10 PSI. If we did, the 10 PSI would come into this chamber and push on this diaphragm. Now that spring is set so that it keeps everything at six PSI. So it, it's gonna close if there's no pressure and I get enough pressure, it's gonna open. And that's gonna open and allow this fuel to bleed off. Keeping this area, this purple, at six PSI. If I tried to increase it, it will push harder on this diaphragm. It will open this orifice right here more and let more fuel flow, dropping the pressure back down. Big, would it go through that vent? No, it's just for a no. Chamber. No, it's a vent chamber. If, yeah, you can't have it unvented or its uh, atmosphere will mess with it. Oh. All right, so follow. Yeah, if, so if, 
for some reason the fuel flow or the fuel pressure, the purple started to die off a little bit. Too low. Too low. Well, then it's going to close the orifice, build it back up to six. Oh, okay. Okay. Why it's a pressure relief valve. That's why it's a pressure relief valve. It's also the discharge nozzle, but that's how it works. So the discharge nozzle is just a pressure relief valve for yes. everything? Yes. Yes. Easy to Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to write a lot of notes for you guys, and, we'll, and I'll, I even have, I think, numbers in here where I kind of add it and make up things, like this does that and this does this. So we're going to, you know, if you're just, just up here watching right now and not writing, you're, you're fine. All right, I'm going to write stuff later. All right, but we'll, we'll go, I was hoping that if I give you a big overview, you'd be like, it's so simple. All right, so let's talk about this. It's running, okay? We're just... Um, I don't want to say idle because it doesn't work in idle. That's a whole other subject. Uh -huh. um, but we're at a low RPM. And so we've got our impact air coming in to A, pushing the diaphragm over. i got to do it backwards for you guys. Pushing it to the right. I've got suction because of the Venturi in chamber B, moving it to the right. So A and B are trying to open the poppet valve. Mm -hmm. Now, it would win and it would open the poppet valve all the way to the, its extreme end, which would then kill off the engine because it would go too rich and die. But here we have fuel coming in from the pump, B, uh, I'm sorry, E, we called it E, through here into chamber D, which is trying to close it, which it would. It would win the tug of war and it would shut down the poppet valve and the poppet valve shuts, the engine shuts down, except for Fuel ran through here real quick, uh, past the uh, main metering jet, into this area where it's held at 6 PSI, came down, filled this chamber up, helped out A and B, and now everything is perfectly in equilibrium. The poppet valve is neither moving to the right, nor is it moving to the left. It's perfectly still, and just the right amount of fuel is flowing through the poppet valve, across the main metering jet, through the fuel control unit, out. It's pushed on this diaphragm. It, the pressure relief valve is working. It's relieving just enough fuel that the engine is very happy. So far, so good? Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to increase the throttle. Add some throttle to it. Give it the beans. More, more and All right. This opens up a little bit, which allows more air to come through. I don't need fuel first. It, the engine runs off air like that. So air starts rushing through. So the impact air, more airs. More air. More air, A and B increases. Follow? Yeah. So the poppet valve opens, which allows more fuel to come in here, which does increase the pressure in D. Yes. All right. But I've already got six in C. So I just a little bit of pressure in D minus this minus whatever in C equals A and B. Follow? So now it's an e it opened up a little bit more because the air metering force increased. It starts to move and doesn't want to stop. I'm going the wrong way, huh? Yeah. It wants to move and it doesn't want to stop, but as soon as it opens up, the fuel comes in, it goes, eh, got to stop. Slow down. It equalizes. So fuel came in through here, starts pushing here. So these two are pushing that way, it equalizes it, but it equalized it. A little, more open, a, little a little more open than it used to be. Okay. So now more fuel is flowing up through here across the main metering jet, and this has got more fuel. So if I had more fuel, what's the pressure want to do? A little, a little bit higher. It wants to go higher, but our pressure the relief pressure valve says, no, no, no. no. Uh, it opens up a little bit more. All right, opens up a little bit more to hold the pressure steady. But what did it do to that extra fuel? It bled it off out the discharge nozzle, which is a really good thing because a few seconds ago we just added a bunch of more air. So now the engine goes, well, hey, I got more air and more fuel. Oh, they just go faster. That's crazy. This is crazy. Now, how quickly would all this happen? Just almost instantly? Or yeah. So it doesn't need an acceleration system like an old car. It does. Would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that looks like this diagram just itself. But <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I hope everybody 
God, if you got what I just did, you're going to be fine. All right? We're just going to build on this with some small components, but they all, this is the, this is how they all work. You know, we're going to change some chambers around a little bit. We're going to add a few things and make it more complicated um, about how certain things work. But this is the, the, the major event here. Let me leave you with this thought. This spring right here, this doesn't work in idle. Remember the carburetor? Yeah. Remember the carburetor? Yeah. yeah. How well did the Venturi work at idle? Not at all. Yeah. This doesn't either. So the Venturi doesn't work at idle, and there's very little impact there. So you have no A and B. No, that's what, it, that's what the spring is for. Just enough pressure. Spring is a just enough pressure. That's your idle spring. Okay, why they put a spring and didn't just say, let's just leave it open? I don't know. They didn't ask me. I'm sure there's a reason, because when you look at what is really this looks like, you're like, whoa, that's a lot of stuff, man. We're basically going way down and dumbing it down and make it very simple, even though it's complicated. There's a lot more going on. We don't get into that. We get into this. So. All right. We good? Yeah, maybe. Discard. No. We keep it for now. Keep it for now.